Good morning. In today's session, we are supposed to study about the torque equation for the free phase induction motor. In previous session, we have seen about the free phase induction motor. There are two types of induction motor. We are saying induction motor as a AC motor, or we can say the type of a motor as a electromechanical machine, which converts electrical energy into a mechanical energy, or vice versa. So here we are supposed to study only about the motor. So here we are supposed to study only about the machine which uses the electrical energy and which give us the mechanical energy. So in our syllabus, we are supposed to study about the three phase induction motor. There are lots of advantages three phase induction motor are having like it is having low cost it requires less maintenance its construction is simple it is reliable its power factor is good also we can say it is can be worked as a self starting because there is a no need of other self other starting device so we can say three phase induction motor as a self starting machine Again, if you see, there are some disadvantages also, like its starting torque is less. Its efficiency changes with changes in the speed. And its speed will decrease with increase in a load. Then we have seen the construction for the three-phase induction motor. Three-phase induction motor will consist of two main parts. These are nothing but the stator and the rotor. In stator, we can see about the stator frame, stator, stator core, stator winding. Then we have seen about, we are supposed to study about two, two types of the three phase induction motor. So we have seen these. These are nothing but the spiral gauge induction motor and the slippery induction motor. When we are using the slippery induction motor, if we will require higher amount of starting torque, it means what? If we will require higher amount of starting torque, at that time you cannot use spiral gauge induction motor. You are supposed to use slippery induction motor. There are different differences. There are lots of differences between the slippery induction motor and the spiral gauge. If you see, slippery induction motor is having construction complicated due to the presence of slippery and the brushes. But if you see in the spiral gauge, there is no need of the slippering and the brushes, so we can say its construction is simple. The rotor winding is same as the stator winding in the slipping. But if you see for the spiral gauge induction motor, here rotor consists of rotor bar. In slipping, we will require additional slipping, also the brushes. But in spiral gauge, we are saying its construction is simple. But if you see for the rotor, its rotor will consist of the rotor bar, which are permanently shorted with the help of ring. So we can say this is the sum. <coughs> so if we are saying about some differences between the spiral gauge and slipping, so we can see here rotor is having the rotor bar in the spiral gauge induction motor. Also, if you see no possible to add external resistance in the spiral gauge but if we are supposed to add external resistance we can do this concept in the slippery induction motor it means what because in slipping we are having the external brushes we are having the slippery so we can add their external resistance also but if you see here we are supposed to add additional part so its efficiency is less and its cost is high but in spiral gauge there is no need of slipping there is no need of brushes so its construction is simple its efficiency is high and we can say about the cost it is cheapest as compared to the slipping induction motor then we have seen about the rotating magnetic field so in three phase induction motor we are giving the three phase supply we can give that three phase supply in two conditions how we can apply that three phase input supply in the star connection or in the delta connections and as we are having here three phases there will be 120 degree phase difference between two adjusted phases for the three phase induction motor so if we are using the three phase induction motor we are supposed to use r 
Y, V. Red, yellow, blue, sequence. And if we are supposed to change the direction of rotating magnetic field, at that time, we are supposed to change that phase sequence. How? If we are using the R by B only, we are supposed to change the, the status for only two adjacent phases. It means what? If we are using the R by B, at that time, we are supposed to maintain one as it is. If we are taking R as it is, you can take instead of Y, firstly you take B, after that you can take Y. If we are changing the changing the location for three of these phases, R, Y, B, at that time, there will be no change in the rotation. If we are supposed to change the rotation, you are supposed to change the direction from out of three, you are supposed to change the direction for only adjacent two. And you are supposed to take one as it is. At that time, you can change the direction for the rotating magnetic field. And if we are saying, if we are using the three phase induction motor, and if we are taking the sequence R, Y, B, and if you are taking the equation for the current, which is flowing because of R, I R, you can take as I M into cos omega T. M is nothing but the maximum current into the cos omega T. So we are having three equations, R by I R, I Y, I B. At that time, if we are using the R Y B sequence, if we are taking the equation for I R as I M into cos omega T, at that time, you can say there will be 120 degree phase difference between adjacent two. So, I by ka equation kya ho jayega? I m into cos 1 omega t minus 120. Because there is a 120 phase difference between r and y. Again, if we are taking the B equation, current flowing through the B because of r with respect to r at that time there will be 240 phase difference because YB may 120 degree or RY may 120 degree. So R or B may kitna ho 240 degree. So you can take the equation IB equal to RM into cos omega T minus 240. So here now we are supposed to study about the torque equation. So already we have seen the torque equation in the DC motor. What we are saying? It is the quantitative measure of the force, force and the perpendicular distance. So we was taking the equation like tau equal to F into R into sin theta. But here, if you see about the three phase induction motor, it will depend mainly on three factors. These are nothing but the part of rotating magnetic field, the magnitude of rotor current and the power factor of the rotor circuit. So here, firstly, we will see about the torque equation. So here, what we are saying? Here we are saying the torque equation is mainly depending on three factors. As we have seen in the DC motor, what we are saying in the torque speed characteristics, torque is directly proportional to the phi and torque is directly proportional to the IA. That is nothing but armature current. Or we can say that will be the rotor current. So same concept here. What we are saying? The rotor will be depend on sorry, the torque will be depend on which factor? It will be depend on the magnitude of rotor current. Rotor current is nothing but the armature current. And how it will be depend? It will be directly proportional. What we are saying again, it will be depend on the part of rotating magnetic field which reacts with the rotor and which is responsible to produce the induced EMF in the rotor. So what we can say? as it is depending on the magnetic field. Magnetic field, it will give us the magnetic flux. So we can say here, the torque will directly proportional with the flux. 
because the, it is depend on the magnetic field and magnetic field which reacts with the rotor is responsible to produce the emf so in simply we can say torque is directly proportional to the ia torque is directly proportional to the fire at third condition what we are saying the power factor of the rotor circuit in the running condition this concept we are supposed to study here because here we are using the three phase instead of one phase here we are using the three phases so here what we are saying we are saying torque is directly proportional with the three factor these are nothing but the flux or magnetic field because magnetic field give us the flux phase so we can say the flux which are responsible to produce the induced emf it is directly proportional with the rotor current rotor current is nothing but i2 again it is proportional with the power factor so we are taking here it is the power factor of the rotor two the two suffix we are using for rotor and if there is one at that time we are saying that suffix we are using for the stator so here we are saying torque is only depend on the rotor factor how it is depend on the flux phase it is depend on the rotor current and it is depend on the power factor of the rotor but what we are saying the flux which are produced by the stator these are also proportional with the stator emf so we can take phi will directly proportional to e1 e1 is nothing but emf which is produced because of the stator so we are saying flux is directly proportional to the e1 but we are aware about the transformation ratio it is defined as it is the transformation ratio there will be some time question uh, for the one mark on the mcq defined transformation ratio or equation of the transformation ratio k equal to they will give the four option like e2 by e1 e2 by f e1 by e2 so you are supposed to understand it is the ratio of secondary voltage with respect to the primary voltage or we can say it is the ratio of rotor current with respect to the stator uh, rotor voltage with respect to the stator voltage so we can take e2 by e1 but what we are saying we are saying phi is produced phi which is produced by the stator is proportional to the stator em so we can take e1 as a phi so you will get e2 equation equal to k into phi but k is nothing but we are taking it is a transformation ratio and ratio it means what it is the constant term so directly you can take e2 equal to phi e2 equal to phi so here now what we are saying here we are supposed to find the torque equation which we have seen in the previous session torque equal to s into k into e2 upon we have seen these are upon r2 square plus s x2 square so how to derive that equation we are studying here so what we are saying torque is depending on three factor which factor it is depending on phi it is depending on i2 and it is depending on power factor cos theta 2 the power factor of the rotor so here we are saying torque we will get proportional with respect to phi i2 cos theta 2 it is nothing but the power factor but here we are saying flux which are produced by the stator is proportional to the stator voltage or stator emf phi is phi is proportional to the e1 but we are having the transformation ratio as e2 by e1 equal to k so we can take e1 as a phi so if you are taking e1 value as a phi you will get e2 equal to phi because k is a constant term because it is the ratio so here now we are saying rotor current we can define as it is the ratio of induced rotor emf under running condition we can take as s e2 to total impedance of the rotor side we can take rotor current as current according to ohm's law equal to v by r but here we are taking rotor current 
So we are supposed to take rotor voltage in the numerator. So we can take S into E2 in the numerator. And what we are saying, it will be the ratio of voltage with respect to the current. So here, instead of resistors, we are using the inductor. Because here, we are supposed to study about the motor. In motor, we are using the inductor as a wire. So we are supposed to study here about the impedance. So that's why we are using here Z2 in the denominator. It will be working as the impedance. So we can take rotor current as the ratio of rotor in this EMF with the rotor impedance. So we can take S E2 upon Z2. But we are having the total impedance equation. That will be square root of R square plus S X2 square. Because here we are having the value of inductors. And that will be the resistors. So we are having the equation for Z2 equal to square root of R2 square plus S X2 square. We can put that value in the rotor current equation. So our rotor current equation will become I2 equal to S E2 upon square root of R2 square S X2 square. So you will get here the value of the rotor. Now we are supposed to find the equation for the torque. So here E2 is nothing but it is the rotor current. S is nothing but it is the slip of induction motor. We have seen this concept in the previous session. X2 is nothing but it is the reactance. X2 is nothing but it is the reactance. R2, it is the rotor resistance. X2 is the reactance of rotor. So here, now we are having the equation for I2. We are having the equation for phi. Now we are supposed to find the equation for the power factor. Then we will get the torque equation. So what we are saying here, power factor is defined as it is the ratio of resistance to that of impedance. So here we are supposed to find the power factor of rotor. So we can say the power factor of rotor we can define as it is the ratio of resistance of the rotor with respect to the impedance of rotor. So we can take R2 as it is. And if there is Z2, we can take that impedance as square root of R2 square plus S X2 square, like here we have taken. So here, now putting this value of flux, rotor current, power factor in the equation of torque, we will get torque will proportional with E2. This is nothing but rotor current. This is the, this is the rotor voltage, this is the rotor current, and this is the power factor. So we will get rotor current ka jo equation mila tha, S E2 square upon square root of R2 square plus S X2 square as it is. We are having the equation for the power factor R2 upon square root of R2 square plus S2 S X2 square. We write this thing as it is. Now, removing the proportionality, we can take the constant. If we are having the any equation, like torque is directly proportional to phi into Ia. You can write torque equal to K into phi into Ia. You are taking here proportionality constant instead of the proportional sign. Ye jo alpha ka sign tha, proportionality. We are taking here equality sign. And instead of this sign, we are supposed to take one constant. That constant we are saying as a proportionality constant. So here we can take T equal to K as remaining equation as it is. We have seen here. What we are having? S E2, E2 square because E2 into E2. R2 as it is. And R2 square plus S X2 square, we are having two square root. So here we can take directly, we can take here square root of R2 square plus S X2 Square. So we are having that proportionality constant for the three phase will be 3 upon 2 pi ln. Here we will get 3 upon 2 pi because here we are using the three phase. So here we will get that n is nothing but it is the speed that will be measured in the second. This is the synchronous speed we can measure in the rotation per second. If we are suppo supposed to take in the minute, you can take. 
into 60. So we can take an S equal to capital N S by 60. So you will get capital N S equal to N S into 60. So here finally we will get the equation for the torque equal to T equal to S T2 square into R2 upon R2 square plus S X2 square. Because here we are having two times square root. Square root ka square. So you can take that value as it is. R2 square plus S X2 square. Because square root or uska square. So you will get that value as it is. There is no need to take square root. And instead of K, you can take 3 upon 2 pi and x. So now we are having the equation for the torque. So here, if we are having the value of torque at that time, starting torque is the torque which is produced by induction motor when it starts. And we know that at the start, at the start, rotor speed is 0, n equal to 0. So we can take slip equal to ns minus n upon ns. That will become 1 because we are taking initially speed equal to 0. So we can see the equation of starting torque is easily obtained by simply putting the value of s equal to 1. So in the equation of torque, if we are putting s equal to 1, we are having the equation s into e2 square r2. So we are taking s equal to 1. So our equation will become t equal to s. There is no there is no meaning to write because we are taking s equal to 1. So we are having here e2 square r2 upon r2 square plus s x2 square. S we are taking 1. So you can take directly x2 square. And k value we can take as it is 3 upon 2 pi and s. So we will have the value of torque. We can say that torque as a standstill torque. Now, we are supposed to study about the maximum torque. So we can say here, in the equation of torque, we are having the value torque equal to S E2 square R2 upon R2 square S X2 square into 3 upon 2 pi n. So to determine the value of torque maximum, we can take its differentiation with respect to slip equal to 0. If we are taking dt by ds equal to 0, we will get the value of torque maximum. So we can take t equal to k into s into e2 square into r2 upon r2 square plus s x2 square. How we have solved? We are taking its differentiation, so you will get this equation. So we can say we will get the value of torque maximum. If you want to see, you can see here how we have solved. If we are having two terms to take differentiation, one numerator and one denominator. You, Shreyas, is there any issue? Krunal, please mute yourself. Please don't draw anything on okay, okay. these PPTs. Okay, huh? These equations I am only explaining to you guys because these things you will require. Okay, huh. so just focus on it. What we are saying here, now we are supposed to determine the value of torque maximum. So how we can take, if we are taking its differentiation, that will be zero. You can say, yeah, its value is maximum. So here, what we can say, if we are supposed to find u by v ka derivative, we are having the mathematical formula. So how we can solve? You can take u into dv by dt of first term minus v into du by dt upon, upon v square. If you are solving like this, you can solve because you guys are aware about the differentiation. You have studied these things in the mathematics. So if you solve this, you will get dt by ds equal to maximum. So you can say you will get the maximum value of torque. If you solve this and if you take dt by ds equal to zero, you can equate that equation with the zero. So you will get s square equal to r2 square upon x2 square. So here, if we are having the value of slip equal to r2 by x2, you can say you will get the maximum value of torque. There will be the question.
torque will be maximum when s equal to x2 by r2 r2 into x2 r2 by x2 you are supposed to understand if we are having the value of s equal to r2 by x2 because these are the squares of everything so you can under root whole equation you will get s equal to r2 by x2 so if we are having the slip value that will be equal to r2 by x2 you can say you will get the torque value maximum and this slip is called as the maximum slip because we are getting the value of torque maximum and we can define here it is defined as it is the ratio of rotor reactance with respect to the rot uh, rotor resistance with respect to the rotor reactance r2 is nothing but resistance and x2 is the reactance so we can say maximum slip is defined as it is the ratio of rotor resistance with respect to the rotor reactance and you will get the equation for torque that will be s e2 square r2 upon r2 square plus s x2 square here s is nothing but slip e2 is nothing but rotor voltage rotor emf r2 rotor resistance s slip x2 rotor reactor so you will get torque value maximum when we will get s equal to r2 by x2 if we are substituting the value of slip in the above equation if you are putting s equal to r2 by x2 you will get maximum torque that will be equal to k or you can write 3 upon 2 pi s k into e2 square upon 2 x square so here we can say you will get the value of torque maximum so from above equation we can conclude that maximum torque is directly proportional with square of induced rotor em because we can see here torque is proportional with the e2 square directly so we can say it is directly proportional to the square of rotor induced emf torque is inversely proportional with the rotor reactance because x2 is in denominator so you can say it is inversely proportional with the rotor reactance the maximum torque is independent on the rotor resistance the maximum torque and if you are saying about the torque it will be depend on the rotor resistance also and if you are talking about maximum torque it will not depend on the rotor resistance it will only depend on rotor emf and rotor reactance so we can say maximum torque is independent of the rotor resistance and the slip at which we will get the maximum torque it will depend upon rotor resistance and the rotor reactor because we can take s equal to r2 by x2 so it will depend on both these terms so here we can say by varying the rotor resistance we can vary the value of torque so maximum torque we will get by obtaining the required slip and we can get the required slip by varying the value of rotor resistance and by varying the value of rotor reactance here we have finished about the torque equation now i am sharing other screen so here we are saying we will get the torque equation that will be equal to the same equation we was saying here what we are saying t equal to k into s into e2 square up into r2 upon you will get square root of r2 square plus s x2 square so here what we are saying torque will depend on the rotor emf it will depend on rotor resistance it will be depend on rotor reactance so here if we are saying about the torque you can say here this will depend on this thing but if you are solving the torque equations that will be the maximum torque you can say that will only depend on rotor reactance and that will depend on only on the rotor 
current that will not depend on the rotor resistor so here by adjusting the value of rotor resistor and rotor reactance we can adjust the value of maximum slip because you will get the value of slip that will depend on r2 and x2 so here we can say we will get the value of torque that will be equal to k into s into e2 square r2 upon r2 square plus s x2 square whole square root so here all these terms what we are saying i have given here so now now we are supposed to study about the torque slip characteristics already we have seen about the torque and slip relation how we have seen if we are saying about the torque we can take torque on the y axis and we can take slip that will be on the x axis so here if the value of slip increases the value of torque increases linearly you guys can see here because we are having the equation where we will get torque equal to s yes. torque is proportional with the s yes. how it will be directly proportional so here you will get if we are increasing the value of torque it will increases up to what you will get the maximum torque but after that you will get region that will be unstable because here if you see the value of torque decreases with increase in slip due to which due to this region we can call this region as a unstable region but from point o to a we can say that region as a stable region because here we are following our torque equations where we will get torque will be proportional linearly with respect to the slip so here we can say we will get the maximum value of torque where if you see here where we will get if the value of s equal to maximum maximum slip and what about the maximum slip how you are calculating the maximum slip r2 by x2 so here if the value of s equal to sm you can say you will get the value of torque that will be the maximum torque and at point b when you will get s equal to 1 you can say that as a starting torque at point c at point c we are having the torque value that will be equal to full load torque full load so we can say that value as a full load torque so here we are saying about the torque slip characteristics so here if you see as the value of slip we are increasing the value of torque will also increases at point a if you see at point a we will get the maximum value of torque and if you see at the starting value of slip where we will get slip value 0 s equal to 0 at the origin o is nothing but the origin we can say if there is no value of slip you will not get any amount of torque torque equal to 0 but if if we are saying starting torque it is nothing but tft at that time at point b you can say here at point b when we will get the starting torque at that time if you see we will get unstable region you will get the unstable region because if you see the value of torque is firstly increasing after that when you will get s equal to sm after that the value of torque is going to decrease so we can say that region as a unstable region now i'm taking firstly your attendance ha huh. if anyone is facing any issue you can ask me otherwise torque slip characteristics again we will see in the next session torque equation we have already seen now we can take from the torque slip characteristics in the next session
if anyone is facing any issue you can ask me otherwise you guys can leave now thank you we can conclude our session bye bye